Home Assistant is mostly managed through a web interface, but there are going to be occasions where you'll have to jump into the command line to make some changes. And that's best done remotely because then you'll be able to do copying and pasting from your computer. And what's really useful about Secure Shell or SSH is not only does it give you remote access to a computer, but it also allows you to actually do file transfers as well. But how do you install and configure SSH on Home Assistant? Well, if that's something you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, because that's what we'll be going over. Now, in order to be able to get remote access to Home Assistant using SSH, we do need to install some additional software. Now, by default, that actual software is invisible to you, so you can't actually install it. You have to make a change to your user account to enable advanced mode first. Because if I click on settings here and then go to add-ons and then add-on store, there's nothing here jumps out to say that it's related to SSH. And if I actually filter the list out with the word SSH, nothing shows up. But if we enable advanced mode, I will be able to see that software. And to do that, we need to make a change to our user account. So I'm going to click on the user uh, account setting down here for our profile. I'm going to scroll down until I find this option here, advanced mode. I'll then enable that option. If we now go back to settings, then to add-ons, and then click on add-on store. There's quite a lot of other softwares now showed up, one of which is SSH. And if I actually type in SSH, you can see I've actually now got two add-ons available. So do bear in mind, if you're trying to install some software and it's not actually visible, it might be because you need to enable advanced mode. Now, which of these two options you go with is entirely up to you. Personally, I'm going to go with the official add-on just to keep things simple. The community add-on has a lot of great features going forward, I must admit. It brings a lot of extra features to the table that you won't find in the official add-on, especially when it comes to user security. The only problem is, as the developer themselves points out, if you want to do file transfers, you have to actually connect to Home Assistant as root. So although this add-on will give you the option to actually log in as a non-root account, that's going to be of no use to the likes of me, who's mostly going to be doing just file transfers anyway. So in which case, I'm going to keep things simple, but try both of them, you know, and see which one you prefer. But as I say, in my case, I'm just going to go with the official add-on. So we're going to click on that one. We're going to click on install, and then off it goes and installs the software. Well, now that the add-on's installed, the next thing to do is to configure it. First thing I'm going to do is disable start on boot. That's because it's a security recommendation. We're going to be mostly managing Home Assistant through a web front end, in which case it's best to leave services like SSH disabled. Now, even though this is actually a home network, we've still got the likes of the FBI giving us plenty of warning about the risks of smart home devices, and these are going to have direct access to Home Assistant. So it's best to leave something like SSH disabled, turn it on when you need to use it, do what you need to do, turn it back off again, in which case we don't want it to then actually start every time Home Assistant gets rebooted or is powered on from cold. The watchdog option I will turn on. That way, if for whatever reason, the actual add-on were to fall over while I'm using it, Home Assistant will try and get it back up and running again. I'm not going to enable auto updates simply because there's always the risk that when a patch gets applied, it might actually break something. So I don't like automated patching. There's an option here showing sidebar. Now in my case, because I'm not going to actually be having this running all of the time, this is not actually beneficial to me anyway, so I'm just going to leave it disabled. I'll always have to come to this page here and start the add-on when I want to use it. Next thing to do is to go to the configuration tab. Now, we've got a choice for the actual login of either having authorized keys or a password. The best thing to do is to use authorized keys. Now, if you're not familiar with these, I've actually got videos showing how to do this with Linux, as well as how to use uh, Putty to create these. So in which case, we need to actually put our public key in here. We will be logging in as root regardless. There's no option here for a user account, but we do need to provide it with an actual public key. Now, I've got um, an actual public key here that was created in Putty Gen. This is the actual key if you open it up with Notepad. Now, if you paste this in, it, it just doesn't work. It doesn't like it at all. 
So in which case, what I'm doing is going back to the putty key generator that was used to actually create this. I've loaded my key back in and I'm actually going to copy and paste the information that's actually in that window. So we'll paste that into there. I'll hit return and this, this will actually work. The other way, for whatever reason, the way it's been stored, it just, it just doesn't like it at all. So we'll click on save and then we should then be able to log in using an actual key uh, authentication system instead. Last thing I want to do is to come to this network um, section here. We're going to click on that option to show disabled ports because here you can actually set the SSH port. You can set it as something else if you want to, and that's usually a, a recommendation. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to stick with a default of 22 and then click on save. We'll go back to the info tab and then click on start and that'll start up the add-on. Well, one of the reasons for installing this add-on was so that we can get remote access to the command line of Home Assistant. So in this example, I'm using PuTTY as the actual SSH client, but you could use something else if you like. I need to give the details of the actual user account we're going to be using, as well as the actual computer. So I'm going to type that we're going to log in as root. So that's root and then at. And then we've got a choice, depends on your network. In my case, I'm using DNS so I can give it the actual fully qualified domain name. If I wasn't using DNS, I'd probably give it the IP address instead. Because we're using SSH keys, I now need to point it to the actual private key that I've got. Home Assistant itself was configured with our public key, but I've got to point the actual putty client to the private key. So down here where it says connection, we've now got SSH, which we need to expand out. Then we click on auth and we need to populate that field with our private key. So we'll click on browse. And then in my case, there is only one private key to use in my My Documents folder. So I'll double click on that. And then scroll back up, click on session. And then we're going to save this. And I'm going to save this as HA. So that way I don't have to keep putting the details in all the time. Click on save. So I've now got a, a stored session that I can keep referring back to. So now that it's got details of who we want to log in uh, as and where we want to log in to, as well as details of our private key, I can click on open. It's the first time I've actually connected, hence why it's asking us to check the fingerprint. You can accept that and keep that stored so that, that way every time you connect, it always knows. Otherwise you can click connect once and it'll keep prompting you every time to check the fingerprint. In my case, I'm just going to click on accept. It now wants the passphrase for the key. So it's not asking you for a password for the root account. It wants the passphrase for the key. And that's because I set this up um, so that my private key has a passphrase. That's the best way to set up keys. Um, the idea then is if somebody wants to get access to Home Assistant using SSH, even if they get their hands on the actual private key that I've got, they still need to know what the actual passphrase is. So I'm going to put that in. And there you go. I've now got SSH access into the command line of Home Assistant. Now, another reason for installing this software is that I can do file transfers. In other words, I want to be able to connect to Home Assistant, upload files or download files using a secure connection through SSH. Now, in this example, we're going to be using WinSCP uh, as the actual client software, but there are other uh, applications out there to do that with. What we need to do is to configure a new session on here to tell it about Home Assistant and how to actually connect. So for that reason, I need to click on the option here, which is new session. And then we'll leave the protocol as is, as SFTP. I need to give it details. So it's kind of similar to how we set up PuTTY. So in which case, I'm going to paste in the natural name. For the username, I'm going to tell it we need to use root. We also need to tell it about a private key. So again, Home Assistant, or more specifically the add-on, knows about our public key. We need to tell WinSCP here about our private key. So on this option here for advanced, we'll click on the drop-down option, select advanced. Down here underneath SSH, we've got an option for authentication. So we'll click on that. And then we'll click on the ellipses so that we can populate this field here uh, with the actual private key that we're using. So we'll click on that. Now I've only got one private key to use and it's in my My Documents folder. So I'll double click on that. 
So it now knows about that. I'll click OK. And then what I can do is I can actually save this. Uh, so I'm just going to call the actual session HA, for example, and click OK. And if I then click login, it connects and it's asking you to check the actual fingerprint. For the sake of the video, I'm just going to click on yes. It wants to know the passphrase of my private key. And that's the best way to do the security. As I've mentioned before, if somebody gets a hold of the key, they still need to know the actual passphrase. So we've got this benefit of something you have and something you know. So I'll put in my password phrase for the key and click on OK. And there you go. I'll now be able to connect into Home Assistant and then do file transfers using WinSCP. Well, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really do hope you found it useful. If so, then do click the like button and share as that will help get the video out to more people who might find it useful as well. If you've got any comments or suggestions, please post those in the comments section below. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yes, do subscribe. Just remember to set the bell icon to actually send you notifications when new content gets released. Although I also post to Twitter as well as Facebook. If you'd like to help the channel and support it, you can actually make contributions through PayPal and buy me a coffee. I've also got links to Patreon and there's also the join membership option for YouTube itself. Patreon and YouTube members do have the option to actually benefit from early access as well. But above all, many thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.